Eating poop would be better than this. <laughs> Part of me really doubts that Sadie would be amused by Lars' comment there, and instead would be at least a tiny bit upset that Lars is being rude to Steven, even if she does agree with him. Hey Steven, you're staring a little bit. No, I'm not. Yeah, even my least favorite episode of Steven Universe has some funny bits, surprisingly. Hey Lars? Is the lip syncing here so off that Steven said hey Lars a second before his mouth moved? Or is it supposed to be that he said something that we don't get to hear? Because either way, that looks wrong. Also, despite the fact that this episode has two people storyboarding it, this is one of those uncanny facial expression episodes. So maybe it's not the amount, but more so who's storyboarding it. But I'm not about to single out names or anything like that, I'll just add three sins to account for this. I know how you feel about Sadie. You don't know what you're talking about, so butt out. Why can't you just admit you love her? And so it begins. It is entirely out of character for Steven to be this pushy and to impose his will onto others this heavily. I get he's only 14 and the teenagers can be ignorant to the fact that the world doesn't revolve around them, but Steven of all people thinking this? Steven, who has constantly cared and been receptive to everyone's feelings, suddenly gets written as this whiny bitch who is actively in denial of others' feelings. And that's not even taking into account how obsessive he is about this, to the point where he's even dreaming about it. That's next level in terms of bad writing. I would expect this from the dark age of Spongebob or something like Fanboy and Chum Chum, not Steven fucking universe. And get a load of this line. You don't need to be such a jerk all the time. I know Lars isn't the greatest person in this show, but it would be one thing if Steven said something like this when Lars was actually insulting him. You know, like when he did it in season 1A and it was one of that season's best moments? But the context changes completely when Steven calls Lars a jerk for... Daring not to date someone. That's not being a jerk, that's being human. And that's also a concept that I think Steven should have grasped by now. And okay, there is a counterpoint to this that I do think is fair, but I want to go over it later when I think it'll be most relevant. So let's hold off on that for now. This isn't the temple. This isn't my voice. Oh, I'm Lars? Ooh, I'm naked! This is fucked up on so many levels. So much so that I think I need to add some context here. Let's start with Steven's mind transfer power itself, which according to the wiki is only really used for three episodes. Out of these three episodes, only one should showed Steven being able to possess a human, that being this one. For now, let's put aside the fact that this power is sorely underused and that it was really contrived in the first place. Why does it manifest now? Are you meaning to tell me that Steven's distress over his goddamn shit being in danger was so strong that it unlocked his ability to literally possess people? There are several startling implications that could be gleaned from that observation, but let's start with the idea that the Kruniverse decided to cross that line and write some very questionable things with it. Like Steven seeing Lars naked. Was that really necessary? It's just so wrong and creepy, and honestly a little disgusting that that joke was even considered. We'll go over this more as the episode progresses, but just know that giving Steven this power was a terrible idea, the way he uses this power turns it into an abysmal idea, and by the end the idea will be so toxic that I have to wonder what the hell the Kruniverse were even thinking. But despite this, credit where credit is due, Lars' voice actor nails it when he acts like Steven. You can really tell the difference, it's genuinely incredible. And while we're at it, Lars' animation throughout the episode has done really well too. You can tell it's Steven in there. I'm gonna be tearing this episode a new one throughout probably 95% of this video, but this is a part of it I can respect. Lars' reflection in the mirror here doesn't seem quite right. Shouldn't the mirror only be showing the back of his head and none of his face? I, Lars, promise to go out and do my very best being your son. I can really understand the sentiment here, and some people might view this as a positive change Steven is trying to make in Lars' life. However, despite the idea of this change being good, that doesn't really change the fact that Steven is making a promise that he's not sure Lars is going to be able to keep. It's shitty that he's potentially setting Lars' parents up for devastation, unless he's planning to stay in Lars' body forever, which could be a genuine implication of this line. Ugh. I'm Lars! Hey, Onion, look, I'm Lars! Dad made me work this morning. Now I stink like pizza and fish. You don't stink. Lars, what a nice thing to say! That's so 
basic though. And Jenny treats it like it's some big nice gesture. Is Lars really that cold towards people that he himself wanted to try and be friends with? I really doubt that. Unless it's either Lars trying super hard to fit in even after learning the lesson that he doesn't have to, or it's just this episode's god awful writing making the old Lars out to be as shitty as possible. Maybe Lars is actually a good guy who likes making people feel good. And I'm starting to think it's the latter. Again, I know Lars is kind of a jerk, but right now this episode is writing him as if he was some completely insufferable prick. And to me, that comes off as gross in the context of an episode where Steven's idea of Lars being a jerk is not dating someone he wants them to. Lars is gonna be psyched. Buck is pleased. Fangs of love. I think I'd rather have my organs pickled. Despite this very horribly, incredibly awkward situation that's playing out in front of us right now, the fact that I'm able to at least chuckle at lines like this one shows that the Crooniverse are still very good at writing jokes like that. They just sometimes use their writing ability to create war crimes like this episode, that's all. Yesterday, I asked if you wanted to come over, but you made a big deal saying no in front of Steven. And now you're here? It's getting to be kind of a roller coaster, isn't it? Roller coasters are fun. Remember that counterpoint I was talking about earlier? Some people might say that Steven is a sheltered kid who's oblivious to social cues and that this line is proof of that. Hell, I might even somewhat agree with that considering how blunt he could be about things in Mr. Greg. However, I want you guys to remember that Steven is the same kid who helped mend the relationship between Greg and Pearl in one of the best episodes of the show. How in the fuck can he go from that to being this oblivious? I don't think this is him being sheltered. This episode is just written awfully. How do you really feel about me? Isn't it obvious? I love you! Wow, they really went there. I think we all knew how this was going to end, but I'm still speechless. I cannot believe that an episode where Steven forcibly shoves two people together, one of which was very clearly against the idea, was greenlit. This is quite possibly the worst scene of this entire show. In context, it so blatantly fumbles on Steven's very character that after I first watched this episode, it took me forever to start liking Steven as a character again. That's how horrid this scene is. I just wanted to fix everything. Just another friendly reminder that Steven is implying that Lars not confessing to Sadie is broken somehow and that it needs to be fixed. How are your guys' opinions on Steven holding up right now? Mine are going great! So does this mean Lars's mind is inside your body? I don't know. You don't know? It really says something that Steven, eager to try and fix Lars' life because he supposedly cares about him so much, didn't give a single solitary thought to where Lars' mind might be right now. For all he knows, his mind could have overwritten Lars' mind or something, thus leaving Lars effectively dead. So we've escalated from not thinking about how his actions might further complicate Lars' life to not thinking about if his actions have even left Lars alive. Live. Fantastic! Where's he going? <laughs> Who's that girl? Let's follow him and find out. Holy shit, this is so contrived! First of all, what reasons would the cool kids have to run after Lars and Sadie here? Do they think something's wrong? If so, you'd think at least one of them would call and find out or just shout Lars' name out before running after them. Secondly, this is the first episode we see Lars' parents out like this. And it's super convenient that they just so happen to see Lars while they're outside, then just so happen to decide to follow him. Why? They don't even sound concerned either, just curious. So they have no reason to not call out his name and ask him. Neither group does. This looks weird, but don't jump to conclusions. 25 seconds later, they go ahead and jump to conclusions. Bear in mind, all they see at this point is Lars trying desperately to wake up an unresponsive Steven. Why do they then think his intentions were to hurt Steven? For all they know, Lars and Sadie could have gotten worried about Steven and went to make sure he was okay. They then saw Steven unconscious, potentially not okay, then tried to wake him up. But now, let's assume the worst possible scenario so that this episode can continue to make the old Lars look as as bad as possible. I spent the day with my mind in your body. <sighs> Whoa, where's your chill? Are they deaf? You mean to tell me that they expect Lars to remain perfectly calm and collected after being told that a different person had complete 
fucking control over his body for a day? Lars is supposed to be chill about that? I usually try to keep my cool in these videos nowadays, so I apologize if this screaming comes off as rather sudden. But we've now devolved to such atrocious writing that this episode is now actively bullying Lars, throwing logic and reasoning out the window just to jab him further. This episode is so unnecessarily cruel and is also starting to be genuinely toxic. I'm really, really sorry about yesterday. I got you a card. It's got a koala and a slot. This is just fucking insulting. After his actions could have genuinely hampered Lars' life, all he can offer as an apology is a goddamn card that references the stuff that Lars was annoyed with in the first place. What a joke. I said you loved her. And what did she say? She thought you'd only say something like that to hurt her. I guess she's right. Maybe that's why everyone liked the you me better than the real me. And there it is. I know I sound like a broken record when I say that I know Lars is supposed to be a jerk, but it's important to bring that up because of this line. Can you imagine if someone took control of your body for a day, and then afterwards you get told something that makes you think that people liked that person more than you? That you, someone who tries so desperately for people to like you are not only replaceable, but that your replacement would be seen as better? Wouldn't you be absolutely devastated? That is the nastiest part of this episode to me. Because while it does try to remedy this by showing that someone does care about Lars, it doesn't feel genuine at all. This episode spent most of its runtime spelling out how much the old Lars has messed up in his personal life and his general shortcomings as a character. And instead of offering a proper episode that could teach teach people how they can recover from such mistakes, they instead spend it with another character trying to fix things that aren't broken under the pretense that Lars' personal decision to not want to date someone was one of the things that were broken. It gives off the impression that you have to become an entirely different person to be seen as likable to the majority of people, as well as put yourself in an uncomfortable position to make people happy, which is really fucking dangerous advice to be peddling. And you might think that this episode is trying to show that a viewpoint like Steven's is wrong and then it shouldn't be followed. But nope, Steven gets absolutely zero form of punishment or guidance from either Sadie or Lars. He's just let off the hook for this. It's so abominable. And I wouldn't be surprised if people who relate to Lars' situation portrayed in this episode now feel less confident about themselves than they did before. It's no fucking wonder that Lars only saw proper character development in space where the writers effectively soft reboot him. I don't think I've ever seen more contempt for a character than I have here. And I know what some of you are probably gonna say in response to that. That's what happens when you take an episode too seriously. This episode is clearly meant to be a jokey humorous episode, you're just overanalyzing it. No. If Steven Universe wants to make a funny haha -ha episode, they have episodes like Garnet's Universe and parts of Log Date 7142 to go off of. An episode that does nothing but bully another character, one that shows nothing but a character's problems without making any kind of point or statement on how to make things better, one that shows a blatantly toxic viewpoint on how someone's life should be fixed and then fails to properly debunk that line of thinking, and an episode that has the gall to say and do all that, why only then making a passing mention at how all this affects said character's mental health, that's not a humorous episode. That's a fucking atrocity. Easily the worst episode in all of Steven Universe. No contest. I rest my case. Oh, and a copy of Steven's fingers just floats here in this frame. <laughs> 